Hey guys, this is Sam, and it's finally time to talk about the iPhone 7. This is something that a lot of us have been waiting for for a very long time, and it's exciting after all the leaks and all the rumors, they, they're finally done, and we've seen the iPhone 7. Here it is on screen right now, and I personally think that it looks awesome. So let's go ahead and talk about everything that changed from the iPhone 6S to the iPhone 7. First off, there are two new colors. Space Gray does not appear to be an option anymore here on the iPhone 7. We now have black and jet black, and wow, does that jet black just pop. It was what a lot of us thought was going to be called piano black. It's that very glossy, reflective back. However, that's only available on the 128 and 256 gigabyte variants of the iPhone 7. So if you want to get that jet black, you have to pay $100 more, so I guess off contract it would be starting at $749 over the base price of $649. Another big feature that I feel like has been requested for years and is actually present in the latest, I know Samsung Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge, is water resistance. They showed you just dropping your iPhone in puddles and having it pour on your iPhone, and it's really weird because Apple has never really got into the water-resistant game until the Apple Watch. And by the way, if you want to see an overview video on the Apple Watch Series 2, I'll link that in the top right-hand corner of the screen, or what changed in the iOS 10 Golden Masters. I've already made videos on that stuff, and you can view them there if you're interested. Just a quick plug. But water resistance is awesome. I cannot wait to see how far, or really how water resistant the iPhone is, and I'm sure there will be crazy people like me on YouTube that try to see how it holds up. Another big change this year is with the home button. So for the first time on any iPhone ever, it's not a clickable button. It's a solid state per se, unmoving object, or really unmoving home button, that is pressure sensitive. It kind of reminds me of 3D Touch, the way that it was explained and the way it looks, and you're going to get haptic or taptic feedback whenever you press on the home button. I assume by vibrations, it sounds really cool, I'm excited to try it out for myself, and apparently it's also customizable which will be very interesting to see. I'm really excited to see how far you can customize this. Maybe you can do certain taps or patterns to achieve certain actions. Now on stage of the keynote, Apple spent a lot of time talking about the cameras, specifically on the iPhone 7 Plus, which we'll get into in just one second because they're dual cameras, they're kind of crazy, but also really cool at the same time. But as for the standard iPhone 7, it's a 12 megapixel shooter. But it now has optical stabilization, which was previously only on Plus models. The normal iPhone, stock iPhone 7, has optical image stabilization, which is really going to help when you're shooting that crispy 4K video. The front-facing FaceTime camera has also been bumped up to 7 megapixels and can shoot 1080p video, which is also amazing. I mean, who doesn't want crisper, crispier selfies? And then on the back, there's a quad LED flash, and the camera is going to look better all around because of this lower f1.8 aperture on the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. It was f2.2. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, just know that a lower aperture lets more light in, and that's really good for taking nice pictures. I do want to spend some more time, though, talking about the iPhone 7 Plus's camera system, because, as mentioned before, there are two cameras now, which is becoming more and more common on smartphones these days. There are two 12 megapixel cameras on the back of the iPhone 7 Plus. It looks like this, which is kind of strange at first, but it makes a lot of sense in usage case scenarios. So, one of the lenses is called a telephoto lens, and it's set at a 2x optical zoom, where the normal lens is just wide angle, it's what we've had on iPhones for years now. This is going to allow you to zoom and attain such a sharper and clearer image because you have two separate cameras with two separate focal lengths. We were just using digital zoom before, but this new camera system is going to be insane, and although I don't plan to pick up the iPhone 7 Plus, I can't wait to hear all about it. Now the display on both the iPhone 7s is a little bit better than before. It's approximately 25% brighter and it also has a wide color gamut, which means that colors are going to be a whole lot better. I'm very excited to see how that turns out as well. As for the processing power, we have an A10 Fusion chip, and if that doesn't sound badass, then I don't know what does. Apple's marketing team, props to you. You guys are awesome. It's going to be twice as fast as the iPhone 6. At first, I thought it was twice as fast as the 6S, and I got really excited, but on their website, they clarify, well, the iPhone 7 is twice as fast as the iPhone 6, to be more specific. And a huge, huge, 
huge change for the iPhone 7 is the fact that they claim that battery life is the best on any iPhone ever. My biggest problem with the iPhone 6s is that the battery was pretty much terrible most days. Even though in my review I thought it was okay, it got worse as time went on. They are claiming two hours more on the iPhone 7 over the iPhone 6s and one hour more on the iPhone 7 Plus over the iPhone 6s Plus. Very interesting to see how that plays out. I will 100% be testing that, so stick around if you want to hear my thoughts on the iPhone 7 and its battery life. As for storage, two huge upgrades here. Number one, and most excitingly, there is no more 16 gigabyte variant for the iPhone 7. It is gone. I hope that Apple never even thinks about reintroducing it because in 2016, 16 gigabytes is not enough. If they would have done that, it would have been a joke and they would have been laughed at. So thank you Apple for wising up and giving us twice the amount of space now starting as the base model at 32 gigabytes. And if you're feeling kind of dangerous, you can even go all the way up to 256 gigabytes, which is the same amount of storage that I have in my MacBook Pro. Why you need that on the phone? I don't know, maybe you're a 4K videographer, but for everybody else, 256 is ridiculous for a mobile device. For the iPhone 7's design, of course, it looks a little bit different as you've seen in all these photos. That is obviously a new change, but we now have stereo speakers because we have stereo speakers, not only do we have like more cutouts on the bottom and we don't have a headphone jack, boom, mic drop, right? Yeah, there is no headphone jack. There's an adapter in the box if you want it. But for the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, you will only be able to hardwire in headphones through the lightning port. So how you're going to charge and do that at the same time, I'm not sure. I'm sure some genius will come up with a, like an adapter of some sort for two lightning ports. That'll look weird, but we've got stereo speakers. One actually uses the earpiece as the top speaker and then the bottom speaker below. Stereo audio is gonna be amazing, and as Apple says, when you have twice the amount of speakers, it's gonna be twice as loud as before. It is also just a little bit better in the LTE arena. When you're using cellular data, it has the ability to process higher speeds, about 50% faster than the iPhone 6S. And both the iPhone 7 Plus and iPhone 7 is just a final interesting little tidbit. They are slightly lighter than the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. So these new devices, even with all these new features, come in lighter than last year's flagships. That is everything that you need to know about the iPhone 7. If you want to see more on the Apple Watch, once again, check that video in the top right hand corner of the screen. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe down below because we'll be taking a look at these devices, if all goes well, the day that they launch here in the United States, which by the way, if I flip back through my notes, uh, I don't have it in here, but it's gonna launch on September 16th and pre-orders start September 9th. So get hyped. These are the new iPhones. Let me know what you think down below because I wanna hear your thoughts. And that's all I've got for you guys. I've been Sam, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.